guys, Tava here, and this is the Yosuoid Solar Portable Charger. And honestly, this device looks and works a lot like most of the other solar chargers in its price range. So you can apply this review to a lot of different products as they're very similar. But jumping into it, as you can see, it has a pretty nice slim shape and it only weighs about half a pound, which is pretty good for a charger that holds 20,000 milliamps. And just for an example, a 20,000 milliamp battery can charge an iPhone 11, which has a charge capacity of 3,110 milliamps, about 6.43 times. So that's a pretty good estimate of the size of this battery. It can charge a lot of devices quite a few times with a single charge of this device. So like most solar chargers, it's advertised for people in adventure situations. So backpacking, hiking, skiing, camping, all those things where you might be out in the woods and you need a charger that can charge itself. So that's the idea of this device at least, but it doesn't exactly work that smoothly. Another example of the charge on this battery is that if you want to bring a drone somewhere like the DJI Mavic Air 2, which has a battery life of 3500 milliamps, you can charge that drone about 5.71 times with this battery. So again, that's a pretty big amount of charging. So just some general characteristics about this battery that you can see is it is pretty small, it fits very easily in my hand, and like I said, it's pretty light, about half a pound, so you can put it on a backpack or bring it with you in different situations and it's not going to be too much of a burden considering how much battery life it holds. On the front of the device it has the solar panel which is obviously the main advertised part of this product as well as some light indicators that show you how much charge you have in the device. On the back there are two USB 2.0 ports that charge at 5 volts as well as a micro USB port for charging the charger. On the front of the device there are two little LED lights that can be pretty bright and programmed in different modes. So for example if you hold the power button on the side for a few times the light turns on and is pretty dang bright and if you click it one more time it turns on to an SOS mode which blinks in this pattern to alert people if you're lost. And if you click it one more time, it's just very quick stro pattern. So it is a pretty bright light that is built automatically into this system and obviously because of the battery will last a very long time. So that is very useful. And on the back of the charger, there's a compass which I found not to work at all. So there's that. <laughs> This product is said to be dust and water resistant, however I don't know how much I would trust that. And also the piece of plastic that blocks off these ports back here broke off very quickly, so now it's definitely not water resistant. I think this has a pretty hefty build and I would trust it for a little bit of rain or dust, but really not too much like dropping it in water. It also comes with a little carabiner clip if you want to clip it onto the outside of a backpack or something. So those are the most basic parts of this charger, but now it's time to talk about the most controversial part as well as the most advertised part which of course is the solar panel. Now having a solar panel on your charger may seem like a really cool thing to have, but when you look at the rates that it actually charges at, it really doesn't seem to make that much sense and seems more gimmicky. So this product says that the solar panel charges about 200 milliamps an hour. And because this battery holds 20,000 milliamps in total, that means that 20,000 divided by 200 equals about 100 hours that it would take for this charger to be charged completely on solar power. And if you divide 100 hours by 24 hours in a day, it equals about 4.71 days in total, which is a lot of days of solar charging until you realize that that's the entire day, day and night, not just times that the sun is optimal on the charger. So if we make the really high estimate of saying there's about 10 hours of direct sunlight on your charger every day, it would take about 10 days to charge this charger entirely based on the solar panel. And of course, that's not accounting for any little drain that might be happening during the night when it's cold or due to just battery draining normally. So if we go back to our iPhone 11 example on charging rates and we look at the 3,110 milliamps of that battery at the rate of 200 milliamps an hour on the solar charger, it would take about 15.55 hours of direct sunlight on the charger to completely charge one iPhone. So again, those are at optimal conditions. I mean, the sun is at 90 degrees pointing straight down and there's no clouds passing by and it's not cold out and the temperature is perfect. So that's very optimal. Basically, what I'm trying to get at is that these solar chargers are cool in concept, but in reality, they really don't do that much. Of course, in desperate situations, if you're stranded somewhere and you have lots of time to charge this thing and have lots of sun for it, it will work and charge a phone eventually. But in normal situations, it's not really going to be effective. So despite all the advertising always showing the solar panel up front as this big great thing, it's honestly a bit of a gimmick and you should probably always just use the charger that it comes with. When this charger is in the sun, you can see that it is charging by a green indicator on it indicating that sunlight is coming into the solar charger and actually working to charge the device, but like I said, it works very slowly. I think that using the normal charging method by plugging it into the wall even takes a while, like five to six hours. So you really have to keep that in mind before you want to go anywhere with this device charged. One last thing is that when I ordered this battery from Amazon and it came in the mail, the first thing on the packaging said that you can't fly with this product on airplanes, which was really disappointing to me because 
the thing you want to do with batteries is travel with them and be able to charge your devices in different locations. But I did some research on the TSA website and they said that you can fly with 100 watt hours of charge, which is exactly what this battery is. So with the 20,000 milliamp hour charge at 5 volts, it equals exactly 100 watts, which they say you can legally fly with. I think this is a very good charger and it can charge a lot of devices based on the milliamp hours, but I just think too much credit is given to the solar panel and too much advertising is focused on that when in reality, it's really only a last minute thing. If you want to buy this product, I'll leave a link down in the description below, but that's it for today. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.